Uh, welcome to the uh, third module of this course mechanics of fiber reinforced polymer composite structures. Uh, till now we have uh, finished uh, first and second module. Uh, if you remember in the first module uh, we had a brief introduction to the composite materials in general and then uh, we, we had a specific discussions on uh, the different terminologies as well as uh, different aspects of uh, like uh, studying this uh, fiber reinforced polymer composites like what is micro mechanics, what is macro mechanics. Okay? And uh, in the in the we understood there that uh, these uh, fiber reinforced polymer composites are anisotropic. Therefore, in the second module, we had a brief introduction to anisotropic elasticity, and then we understood that for a fully anisotropic material, uh, to characterize the material, that means to uh, understand the stress strain relationship, we need 21 independent elastic constants. Then we had a uh, discussion on uh, we had discussions on uh, the planes of material property symmetry and we understood that uh, in many materials actually there exists plane of material property symmetry and how the existence of planes of material property symmetry leads to uh, the reduction in number of independent elastic constants required. And we, we have seen that from uh, 21 independent elastic constants in case of an orthotropic material where we have three mutually perpendicular planes of material property symmetry uh, we need only 9 independent elastic constants and then we know that for isotropic material we need only 2. And uh, therefore, uh, we understood the, the, uh, the, that for characterizing an orthotropic material we need 9 independent elastic constants. Okay? So, having understood that in the third module is important that we, we will actually discuss macro mechanics of lamina. Why? Because uh, uh, fiber reinforced polymer uh, composites actually the basic uh, building block is the lamina and we had uh, discussed in uh, one of the previous classes that to understand the fiber reinforced polymer composite structures we must understand the mechanics of the lamina. Okay? Therefore, in the third module we will discuss the macro mechanics of lamina. So, in macro mechanics of lamina uh, basically we will discuss first the Hooke's law for two dimensional unidirectional lamina we understood that lamina could be unidirectional, lamina could be bidirectional. Okay. Here we will try to uh, understand the Hooke's law that is the stress strain relationship for uh, a unidirectional lamina. Then we will try to develop the stiffness and compliance matrix for a lamina and then we will see that how the stiffness and compliance matrix elements are actually related to the measurable engineering constants. This also we have done in our last lecture where in general for an orthotropic material we, we understood that how these 9 independent elastic constants are actually related to the uh, measurable engineering constants. Here we will specifically look at it for a lamina. Okay. Then we will also try to understand what are what is the influence of uh, fiber angles on the uh, uh, on the behavior of a lamina. Okay. Now, this is a now before we actually go let us just quickly revisit that some of the important features of a lamina. So, lamina is the as we know that it is the basic form of uh, continuous fiber reinforced composite laminate composite structures. This is nothing but a large number of fibers which are actually impregnated into matrix. You can see in this figure it is like a, a schematic of a lamina. Okay. And uh, we understood that lamina is very thin and its thickness is much smaller compared to its other two dimensions. Okay. So, also importantly lamina is heterogeneous because naturally it consists of two constituents fiber and the matrix whose material properties are different. What is heterogeneous? Heterogeneous the properties are location dependent. Therefore, suppose if you randomly put my if I randomly put my tip of my pen if it if it is on the fiber then the uh, the material properties are different compared to if it if it is on the matrix then the material properties are different. Okay. So, the stress strain relation at a point on the matrix is different uh, than that at a point on the fiber therefore, it is heterogeneous. Okay. Also we understood that it is anisotropic of course, unidirectional lamina are orthotropic. Anisotropic means the properties are direction dependent and uh, suppose if we take a lamina and we try to uh, uh, I mean uh, uh, see the uh, properties with respect to an axis it dip suppose this is a lamina okay, unidirectional lamina its stiffness along this direction will be definitely different if I take 
try to understand if we try to find out the stiffness in any other direction. Okay. Therefore, it is direction dependent. However, in a unidirectional lamina because it is orthotropic there are three mutual, mutually perpendicular planes of material property symmetry. Therefore, it is not fully anisotropic it, it, it requires 9 independent elastic constants. Even the unidirectional lamina could be actually specially orthotropic lamina. What is a specially orthotropic lamina? The analysis axis if you look at this figure this is uh, 1, 2, 3 are the planes of orthotropy. 1 means the 2, 3 plane. Okay. A plane is uh, uh, actually characterized by surface normal. So, 1, 2 and 3 are the directions of orthotropy or the planes of material property symmetry. Okay. Now, there are cases when the loading axis or the analysis axis do not coincide with the axis of orthotropy. Okay. So, there it is uh, this type of laminates are actually called generally orthotropic lamina like this is specially orthotropic. Okay. If x, y, z coincides with 1, 2, 3 then if we want to characterize the stresses and strain with respect to x, y, z I mean it is coinciding with the planes of ortho, I mean directions of orthotropy and therefore, it is a specially orthotropic lamina and if it is not then it is a generally orthotropic lamina and the it depends upon the uh, fiber orientation you know like in this case suppose the fiber orientation is different like if you if x is the longitudinal axis if x is the longitudinal axis the direction of fiber is 1. So, it makes an angle theta if it is therefore, depending upon what is the orientation uh, angle I mean if they exactly coincide then the angle between 1 and x will be 0. Okay. So, then it, it will be actually a specially orthotropic lamina. Having understood this lamina the objective of this lecture will be to develop the stress strain relationship of a lamina keeping in mind that lamina is very thin okay, and we will try to establish the stiffness and compliance matrix for a lamina and then we will also analogous to what we have done for an orthotropic material we will try to look at the engineering constants for an orthotropic lamina unidirectional lamina. Of course, we go with in the macro mechanics. Uh, we go with these assumptions. We will co consider that it is linearly elastic, that means Hooke's law is applicable, okay. and we will use the small deformation theory, that means the uh, strain displacement relationship for small displacement holds true here. Okay. And because the lamina is thin, therefore, we can consider this to be a, that a plane stress state situation exists and no out of plane stresses are there. And very, very important because it is macro mechanics analysis the lamina is considered to be homogeneous. Just now we have discussed that lamina is actually heterogeneous. It consists of fiber and the matrix therefore, properties are actually location dependent. But then to understand the behavior of the lamina we will consider this to be macroscopically homogeneous. What is that? That means, they are represented by their average properties. How these average properties are obtained? Suppose, if you take a lamina and put uh, and load it in UTM and try to draw its stress strain diagram we can get its Young's modulus in a particular direction. So, even though that Young's modulus in that direction is actually decided by what is the percentage of fiber, what is the percentage of the matrix or okay, but then in macroscopic in macro mechanics analysis we will go ahead with that average properties. Okay. But in when we do the micro mechanics analysis we will see in details how the constituents and the relative properties of the constituent actually uh, dictates the effective property of a lamina. But here we will consider for all, all uh, analysis in, in macro mechanics, we will consider the lamina to be homogeneous and represented by the average properties. Now, uh, we will just revisit that for an orthotropic lamina, we have the strain related to stress by means of that we have seen already in our last module that strain is related to stress by means of compliance matrix S. Okay. So, here the stresses and strains are actually with respect to 1, 2, 3 axis. Okay. Stresses and strains are with respect to 1, 2, 3 axis which are nothing but the direction of orthotropy. You can see here that if this is a lamina of course, uh, the, the thickness is exerted 
the laminar thickness is much less compared to its lateral dimension, but just to show that it is an unit it is an unidirectional lamina say this 1, 2 and 3 are the directions of orthodropy, okay? 3 mutual, mutually perpendicular planes of material body symmetry and we can relate the stresses and strains with respect to 1, 2, 3 by this, okay? this compl compliance matrix or if we take the inverse of this, this is nothing but the stiffness matrix. Okay? And we can see that this is symmetric, therefore, we need actually 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So, we know that we need actually 9 independent elastic constants. So, this is for a any any three dimensional okay, orthotropic body. Okay. So, now if uh, a typical lamina because it is very thin, it is shown here say the lamina is very thin, this is the thickness. In fact, it is much thinner compared okay, this is the thickness. Okay. Uh, compared to its in plane dimension okay and suppose no outer plane load is applied it could be assumed to be it could be assumed to be a in the state of plane stress what is plane stress we know that that uh, if the load is only in this plane one two plane and there is no variation of the uh, load distribution along the thickness direction that means along this there is no variation of load and there is no outer plane load it is a uh, case of plane stress so in a two dimensional lamina therefore only three components of stresses exist sigma 1 sigma 2 and tau 1 2 two in plane normal stress and one in plane shear stress okay and outer plane stresses like sigma 3 tau 2 3 tau 1 3 is zero okay now if you put this uh, suppose if we put this in this okay this is 0, this is 0, this is 0, these three stresses are 0. So, we can write from this, we can write epsilon 1 as S 1 1 sigma 1, S 1 2 sigma 2 and others are 0. Uh, so, this is epsilon 1. Similarly, we can write epsilon 2, S 1 2 sigma 1, S 2 2 sigma 2, others are 0 and we can write epsilon 3 is S 1 3 into sigma 1, S 2 3 into sigma 2. So, this is what we have written here. So, from from how we get this uh, from uh, from this epsilon is equal to S into sigma, okay, we get this. Okay. Gamma 2 3 is 0, gamma 1 3 is also 0, epsilon 3 is equal to S 1 3 sigma 1 S 2 3 sigma 2. Okay. And of course, we can write from uh, sigma is equal to C into epsilon gives us this. Okay. If you see this from here, you can write sigma is equal to C 1 1 epsilon 1 C 1 2 epsilon 2. Okay. So, therefore, sigma 1 is equal to C 1 1 epsilon 1, C 1 2 epsilon 2 and C 1 3 epsilon 3 because see epsilon 3 is not 0. I have just shown here the epsilon 3 is not 0. Okay. Even though sigma 3 is 0, epsilon 3 is not 0. Similarly, you can write sigma 2 from this. Sigma 2 is nothing but C 1 2 epsilon 1, C 2 2 epsilon 2 and C 2 3 epsilon 3. Okay. So, we have written sigma 1, sigma 2 and of course, sigma 3 is equal to 0, but sigma 3 is equal to C 1 3 epsilon 1, C 2 3 epsilon 2 and C 3 3 epsilon 3. Now, because sigma 3 is 0, so we can actually write epsilon 3 in terms of epsilon 1 and epsilon 2 from this. From this equation, we can write epsilon 3 in terms of epsilon 1 and epsilon 2 and if we put this, if we put this value of epsilon 3 in terms of epsilon 1 and epsilon 2, what we get is we can write like this. Okay. 
So, what we could see is we can actually write sigma 1 in terms of epsilon 1 and epsilon 2, sigma 2 in terms of epsilon 1 and epsilon 2 and of course, sigma 3 is equal to 0. So, we get the relationship between sigma 1, sigma 2 and epsilon 1, epsilon 2 by this. So, this is termed as q 1 1, this is termed as q 1 2, you can see that this and this are same. So, this is also q 1 2 and this is Okay. So, two normal stresses are connected to two normal strains. Of course, there is a third normal strain sigma epsilon 3, but this is not independent. It is a function of epsilon 1 and epsilon 2. Therefore, this is dropped from the stress strain relationship. So, the stress strain relationship could be written for a typical lamina as this. Okay. Normal strains and shear strain, in plane normal strain and shear strains are related to two normal stresses and in plane shear stress by this. Now, this is what is q 1 1, q 1 2, what we have just shown this is what is q 1 1, q 1 2. So, we could write the relationship between the in plane stresses to the corresponding in plane strain. Okay. Please note again that epsilon 3 is not 0, but this is not independent either this is actually dependent on epsilon 1 and epsilon 2 therefore, it is not put in the stress strain matrix. So, the stress strain relationship is actually finally, uh, uh, goes to the relating the in plane stresses to normal stress uh, sigma 1, sigma 2 and 1 shear stress tau 1 2 to the corresponding normal strains and shear strains by means of this q matrix or taking inverse with the by means of s matrix. This q is known as reduced stiffness matrix, reduced means we have actually reduced it. Uh, from the coefficient of the stiffness matrix in 3 D, we have reduced it to two dimensional stress strain relationship. Therefore, it is reduced stiffness matrix and because Q could be written in terms of S, therefore, we can also write the relationship between the terms of the reduced stiffness matrix with this the compliance matrix. Okay. So, this is uh, in short form what is Q 1, I mean Q matrix in terms of C, okay, where I and j varies between 1 to 6. Why 1 to 6? You can see here because these are the in plane components sigma 1, sigma 2 and tau 1 2. Therefore, 1 1, 1 2, 1 3, 1 4, 1 5 and this only this 1 6 component is there. Okay. So, that is why it is actually uh, this varies between 1, 2 and 6. Okay. So, we have established the reduced stiffness uh, matrix and the compliance matrix for a orthotropic unidirectional lamina, okay. where of course, the stresses and strains are related, where stresses and strains are actually referred with respect to the 1, 2, 3 or the, or the directions of orthotropy. Now, what are the corresponding engineering constants? What, what are the engineering constants? Like we can easily uh, represent the stress strain relationship in terms of the uh, coefficients of the uh, compliance or stiffness matrix, but these are not measurable. Uh, actually, the measurable quantities are the engineering constants like Young's modulus, Poisson's ratio. We we know uh, we have discussed already that for isotropic material we have only two, and we do not need any suffix. It is only E and nu. But in case of orthotropic material, we need Young's modulus with a suffix because it is direction dependent. Therefore, we need E1, E2, E3. Similarly, we need nu 1 to Poisson's ratio, nu 2 3, nu 3 1. In the same way, we need g 1 to g 2 3, g 3 1 because they are direction dependent. Okay. Now, let us consider a, a, a unidirectional lamina 1 2 as the principal material direction. What is principal material direction? 1 is the you know the direction of the longitudinal direction of the fiber. 2 is the transverse direction of the fiber. Okay. So, E 1 is called the longitudinal Young's modulus. Okay. That means, Young's modulus along 1 is the E 1 which is no also known as the longitudinal Young's modulus. Okay. E 2 is the E 2 is the Young's modulus along direction 2 which is also known as the transverse Young's modulus. Okay. 
and nu 1 2 is the major portion ratio why major because this that by definition what is nu 1 2 nu 1 2 is the uh, ratio of the lateral strain to the longitudinal strain when only longitudinal stress is applied okay therefore nu 1 2 is epsilon 2 by epsilon 1 of course with minus when sigma 1 is acting and this is called major portions ratio uh, and this is the minor portions ratio nu 2 1 is the minor portions ratio okay defined as nu 2 1 is the ratio of the strain along 1 to the strain along 2 when only stress is applied along direction 2 okay and g 1 2 is the in plane shear modulus okay experimentally uh, we can actually uh, suppose if we load a lamina unidirectional lamina in the direction of the fiber longitudinal direction and look at the stress strain curve we can find out what is e 1 similarly if we load in the other direction we can find out what is e 2 okay and from either of these we can find out nu 1 2 and nu 2 1 okay so uh, experimentally this could be measured and related to the four elements of compliance matrix. What are the four elements of compliance matrix? You can see that because a plane stress exists therefore, we had actually 4 1 1 1 2 2 2 and 6 6. So, 4 independent constants similarly here q 1 1 q 1 2 q 2 2 q 6 6. Okay. So, 4 independent constants. Okay. So, these four independent constants could be related to the engineering properties of a unidirectional lamina. Now, let us uh, see how we do that. Okay. Suppose, we apply a pure tensile load along direction 1 along the longitudinal direction. Okay. We apply only sigma 1 and other two stresses are 0. Okay. Sigma 2 and tau 1 2 are 0. Therefore, using this uh, stress strain relationship, so only sigma 1 is there, other 2 are 0, it immediately gives us that epsilon 1 is nothing but S11 into sigma 1, epsilon 2 is nothing but uh, S12 into sigma 1, and gamma 1 2 is 0. Okay. Now, uh, this lamina is orthotropic. If you remember, we have discussed that in an orthotropic uh, material there is no shear extension, but in orthotropic material there is no uh, coupling between uh, the normal stress and shear strain and vice versa. So, naturally you can clearly see here also that if we apply we have applied only sigma 1 and therefore, it did not result in any shear strain. Now, by definition of Young's modulus, what is the Young's modulus along 1 E 1? E 1 is defined as the ratio of sigma 1 by epsilon 1. We have applied sigma 1 as the stress along 1 and the corresponding strain is epsilon 1. Therefore, from this we can write that E 1 is equal to 1 by S 1 1. Similarly, uh, by definition of portions ratio nu 1 2 is equal to minus epsilon 2 by epsilon 1 when only sigma 1 is applied. Meaning, sigma 2 is equal to 0, tau 1 2 is equal to 0. This is precisely the case here. Therefore, this is the epsilon 2 by epsilon 1. If we put the values of epsilon 2 by epsilon 1, so we get that nu 1 2 is equal to minus S 1 2 by S 1 1. So, we get we obtain the relationship between the engineering constants and the coefficients of the compliance matrix. Okay. Next, what you can do is suppose we apply only sigma 2 along the transverse direction. Okay. So, only sigma 2 is not 0, sigma 1 is 0, tau 1 2 is 0. Therefore, again using the stress strain relationship in terms of compliance matrix, we can write that sigma 2 will lead to a strain along 1 which is epsilon 1 is equal to S 1 2 into sigma 2 and of course, a direct strain along 2 which is S 2 2 into sigma 2 and there will be no shear strain because it is orthotropic. And by definition of uh, Young's modulus, E 2 is nothing but sigma 2 by epsilon 2. Therefore, this is S 2 2. Okay. So, E 2 is nothing but sigma 2 by epsilon 2. 
therefore, you can see that from here if we put the value of epsilon 2. So, E 2 is equal to E 2 is equal to 1 by S 2 2. Similarly, going by the definition of Poisson's ratio nu 2 1 is nothing but what is nu 2 1? It is the ratio of epsilon 1 by epsilon 2 when only sigma 2 is acting meaning that sigma 1 is equal to 0, tau 1 2 is equal to 0 and this is precisely the case here. Therefore, when you put sigma 1 by sigma 2 it comes out to be S 1 2 by S 2 2 therefore, nu 2 1 is equal to minus S 1 2 by S 2 2. If you compare if you compare uh, the earlier uh, the value of nu 1 2 nu 1 2 was minus S 1 2 by S 1 1. Therefore, if you compare you can divide uh, also we have nu 1 2 is equal to minus S 1 2 by S 1 1. So, these two gives us the relation that nu 1 2 by nu 2 1 is equal to E 1 by E 2. Okay. If you remember we have also uh, obtained this in case of uh, orthotopic material in general. So, naturally this is true here also. So, even though we have major and minor portions ratio, but they are not independent, they are interdependent, they are, they are uh, related by the ratio of E 1 and E 2. Okay. Next, uh, suppose we apply a pure shear in an, uh, in, in an orthotropic uh, lamina that means, uh, only tau 1 2 is not 0, there is no normal stress. Again uh, using the stress strain relationship in terms of the compliance matrix, naturally only shear stress is applied. Therefore, there will not be any normal stress, it is orthotropic material, but there will be corresponding shear strain and the corresponding shear strain is S66 tau 1 2. And going by the definition of shear modulus, the ratio of the shear stress to shear strain, we get G 1 2 as 1 by S66. So, what we have established here is that we have established a relationship between the elements of the compliance matrix and the engineering constants for an orthotropic lamina. Okay. So, therefore, for a specially ortho what is why we are calling it specially orthotropic because we are analyzing we are uh, analyzing the stress strain with, res with reference to the 1 2 direction which is which is also the direction of orthotropy. Okay. Therefore, for a special orthotropic lamina the elements of compliance matrix could be written in terms of engineering constants as this okay. where E 1 E 2 are the uh, E 1 and E 2 are the Young's modulus along the longitudinal and transverse direction. Okay. Nu 1 2 is the Poisson's ratio in the uh, with reference to 1 2 plane and G 1 2 is the shear modulus in the plane 1 2. Okay. So, we have not shown nu 2 1 here because as I told this is interdependent. Therefore, we need actually 4 independent you know engineering constants E 1, E 2, nu 1 2, G 1 2 which are related to the elements of the compliance matrix okay. and therefore, they could also be written in terms of uh, elements of reduced stiffness matrix because uh, reduced stiffness matrix and compliance matrix terms are re related. So, this is in terms of the reduced stiffness matrix in terms of the engineering constants. Okay. So, these are the elements of reduced stiffness matrix in terms of the engineering constants. Okay. So, what is E 1, E 2, nu 1, 2? G 1 2 is if we have a lamina where this is 1 along the fiber, this is 2 perpendicular to this. So, this is E 1, this is E 2 and in this plane this is nu 1 2, this is G 1 2 and they are related to the uh, coefficients of the reduced transform matrix. Uh, reduced uh, sorry uh, reduced stiffness matrix as well as to the elements of compliance matrix. So, 
this is what it is. Uh, so, the stress strain relationship for a uh, unidirectional special orthotopic lamina in the material axis 1, 2 could be specified by any one of these combinations. Either we can write in terms of these four okay, reduced stiffness matrix elements or the compliance matrix or these four engineering constants. Okay. So, this is the stress strain relationship. We can also write this all this in terms of the engineering constants. Okay. Now, what is important here is that again in a special orthotopic lamina, the normal stresses applied in one two directions do not result in any shearing strain and vice versa. Just now I have told, but I am repeating it again. The reason is you can clearly see Q16, Q26, and S16, S26 are 0. Had it not been 0, there would have been a you know relation between sigma 1 and gamma 1 2 and vice versa. Because these are 0, suppose if this is not 0, then there would have been a relation between sigma 2 and gamma 1 2. Now, because q 1 2 uh, sorry q 1 6 and q 2 6 are 0, similarly s 1 6 and s 2 6 are 0. Therefore, there is no shear extension coupling in a specially orthotopic lamina. Okay. Uh, even though we have done this for only for a unidirectional lamina, uh, this uh, and a continuous fiber lamina, even a short fiber composites arranged perpendicular to each other or aligned in one direction are also specially orthotopic. Okay. If you if they are perfectly aligned, then this is also they also show orthotropic okay, properties. Now, we have developed the relationship for a lamina with reference to its uh, uh, direction of orthotopy with reference to 1, 2. Now, there are cases when the principal material axis do not coincide with the analysis axis that are geometrically natural to the solution of certain problems. Okay. Like for example, suppose this is a say cylinder helically owned uh, fiber reinforced circular cylinder. Now, this is these are the directions, this is the direction of the fiber. Okay. So, at any point, so naturally this is the longitudinal direction and perpendicular to this is the transverse direction. Okay. But we will like to analyze this, suppose this is a cylinder, we would like to analyze this with reference to this x y z plane, not with reference to 1 2 plane. Okay. So, a lamina where the material axis actually do not coincide with the analysis axis is generally orthotropic. Another example is suppose as, as you know that a laminate actually uh, consists of large number of lamina stacked together and each of these lamina could have different fiber orientation. Now, suppose this is a laminate, this is again exerted, suppose it shows 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 lamina, suppose these are the 5 lamina 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay. Suppose this is uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 5 lamina. Okay. Now, this 5 lamina has different orientations. Okay. Maybe one of this is having 0 degree which coincides with this x y z. Okay. It is 1, 2, 3 coincides with x y, it is 1, 2 coincides with x y, but suppose this this is 45 degree. Suppose second lamina this is say 45 degree. Okay. Then for this x y do not coincide with 1, 2 like this is the case here. Suppose for for a particular lamina, the x y direction, which is our uh, I mean natural to this problem, we would always like to have the solutions with respect with reference to x y, do not coincide with the one two. Okay, so it's a specially orthotropic lamina. In such cases, now what we have done uh, uh, just now, uh, we have obtained the stress strain relationship in a lamina with reference to one two plane. Okay, so in such cases it is important that we develop the stress strain relationship with respect to x y which is not coincident with 1 2. Okay. So, this is what is uh, we are going to do in the and this kind of lamina are actually called angle lamina which makes certain angle with the uh, this analysis axis. Okay. In this case say theta is the fiber angle. Okay. 
so we would like to see how we develop this uh, state strain relationship. Now, this terminology 1 2 is the local axis or material axis for a lamina where 1 is parallel to fiber, this is 1 parallel to fiber, 2 is perpendicular to the fiber, okay, sometimes also referred to as 1 as longitudinal direction, 2 as transverse direction, 2 as transverse direction. Okay. And this 1 2 axis is called the local axis or material axis okay. and x y which is the solution axis okay, or the analysis axis is called global axis or off axis and theta is called the fiber orientation angle. Okay. This theta is the fiber orientation angle. Suppose theta is 0 then x coincides with 1 and it is specially orthotropic lamina. Okay. Now, our objective here is to develop a relationship between the stresses with respect to x y to the corresponding strains. We have already done with reference to 1 2, but now we want to do with reference to x y this is what we intend to do. Now, let us start uh, with uh, we all know that if we we know that we can transform stresses and strain. If we know the state of stress with respect to a uh, Cartesian coordinate say x y z, we can actually uh, write down the, the stresses with respect to any rotated axis x, x prime y prime z prime provided we know the direction cosines. So, this is what precisely we will be using here to establish a relationship between the stresses and strains uh, with respect to x y plane. Okay. Now, uh, already we have developed that with reference to 1 2 plane with ref reference to 1 2 axis we have the relationship between stresses and strains in terms of this what is this q? q is the reduced stiffness matrix. Okay. So, this just now we have developed this. Now, suppose sigma 1 2 sigma 1 sigma 2 tau 1 2 are the stresses with, ref, with respect to 1 2 axis okay. and sigma x sigma y tau x y are the stresses with respect to x y axis. So, we know that means, this is a rotation about z axis okay. uh, say basically this is x this is y and say this is z we rotate this x prime y prime by theta. So, that it is a rotation about z axis now in this case this is 1 and y prime is 2. Okay. So, we know that how the stresses transform. Okay. So, we have we can sigma x prime sigma y prime tau x y prime is actually uh, related to the by means of this transformation matrix sigma x sigma y tau x y we, we know this we have done this in two dimension and three dimension as well. So, we all know how the stresses transform in this case this x prime y prime z uh, is nothing but 1 2. Okay. Therefore, we can write here that sigma 1 sigma 2 tau 1 2 is equal to t sigma x sigma y tau x y okay. where t is the stress transformation matrix which is cos square theta sin square theta twice sin cos this we all know. Okay. Therefore, we can write the stresses with reference to x y by taking inverse of this t in terms of the stresses with reference to 1 2. So, this is what we have done here. So, we have written the stresses we have related the stresses with reference to x y axis and the stresses with reference to 1 2 axis 
by means of this transformation matrix. Okay. So, having done that similarly, we also know how the strains transform. Suppose, the this is the strains with reference to 1, 2 and this is the strains with reference to x, y. So, we can also perform the strain transform analogous to this, but then uh, I think important that we must remember that uh, it is the tensorial transformation, but this gamma is the engineering shear strain and we know that uh, this gamma x y is actually del u uh, del y plus del v del x, but actually the tensorial strain is nothing but half del u del y plus del v del x. Okay. Therefore, this actually follows the same because it is a second order tensor this uh, uh, stress and strain both are second order tensor and they follow the same transformation, but this is because it is half. Therefore, oh, we actually use this for the to, to use the same uh, transformation matrix we, we have to divide this by 2. This is important just go back and review, uh, review your uh, solid mechanics uh, course you can remember if you do not remember it. Okay. So, we can use the same transformation if we write it is only gamma x y it will be wrong. Okay. So, you, uh, then our transformation matrix will be different. Therefore, in this case we can use the same transformation matrix which you have used for stress, but we divide this engineering shear stress by 2 and the engineering shear strain by 2. Okay. So, therefore, the strains in the x y are also related to, related to the strains in 1 2 okay, by the same transformation matrix which we have used for the stresses. Okay. Now, our objective is to relate the stresses in the x y to the corresponding strain and vice versa. So, now we do a simple um, like the strains because we have divided by 2 this is actually we make a simple transformation here by this R matrix okay, so that this by, by 2 is actually eliminated. Okay. So, we can relate this epsilon and epsilon to gamma 1 2 to this multiplying with this uh, matrix R matrix it is called Reuter matrix. Okay. So, now to start with let us write the stresses with respect to x y. So, sigma x sigma y tau x y and we know this is related to the stresses with respect to 1 2 by means of this T inverse just now we have seen and now these stresses in 1 2 are actually uh, related to the corresponding strains by means of this reduced transform matrix which you have seen just now for special orthotropic material. So, we can write it and this the strains in 1 2 is related to the strains only thing that shear strain is divided by 2 by this just now we have done that okay, R matrix and we can relate this epsilon and epsilon 2 and gamma 1 2 by 2 to the strains in the x y plane by means of this transformation matrix again. Okay. And finally, again using the R matrix we convert this to epsilon x epsilon y gamma x y. Therefore, finally we obtain the stresses in the x y plane are actually related to the corresponding strains in the x y plane by means of this is multiplication of 5 matrices. Okay. Note that in this the q is the matrix which is actually the reduced stiffness matrix okay, which is the property of that uh, lamina okay, which is the property because this could be expressed in terms of the engineering constants. Okay. Uh, so, if we multiply this because we know what is the form of q, we know what is r and what is t. Therefore, if we multiply this we can write the stresses in terms of with respect to x y they are related to the strains with respect to x y by this matrix q bar matrix. Okay this q bar is called the transform reduced stiffness matrix. If you remember q was the reduced stiffness matrix because we have reduced from 3 dimension to 2 dimension and now because it is transformed from 1 2 to 
x y we have already established the relationship between stresses and strains in the 1 2 plane uh, in the in the 1 2 axis. Now, we have established with reference to x y by means of stress and strain transformation. Therefore, it is transform reduced stiffness matrix and this is how all the terms of q 1 1 bar. Okay. So, as you can see this is nothing but a function of uh, q 1 1, q 1 2, q 2 2, q 6 6 and sin theta cos theta because if you look at this, this r is nothing but it this consists of numbers and this t is actually function of sin theta and cos theta. Therefore, you can see that all these uh, elements of the reduced transform stiffness matrix are actually expressed in terms of the reduced stiffness matrix and theta. What is theta? Theta is the fiber orientation angle or theta is the angle which the 1 to axis makes with the x y axis. This is what is theta. Okay. Now, what is important here is that uh, similarly we can also write the compliance. Okay. Similarly, we can write the co transform compliance matrix also. Again, they are, this is also function of S 1 1, S 1 2, S 2 2, S 6 6 and cos theta sin theta. Okay. So, what is important here is that uh, unlike uh, if you if you remember for special orthotropic lamina this q 1 6, q 2 6 are 0, but here all the 6 components are non-zero. That means, six constants. How many number of constants are there for special orthotropic when we have developed the stress strain relationship in with reference to 1 2 only 4, but now it is 6. What is important is why it is 6 because this 2 terms q 1 6 and q 2 6 terms are there and what is the significance of this term? They actually relates the normal stress to shear strain and vice versa. Okay. That means, now if you apply a normal stress along x sigma x that will also lead to a shear strain gamma x y. If you apply a normal stress along y that will also lead to a shear strain gamma x y. If you apply a shear stress pure shear stress gamma x y that will also lead to normal strain epsilon x epsilon y. Okay. So, there is shear coupling now with reference to x y. Okay. Now, apparently it looks like see in orthotropic lamina actually there is no shear extension coupling. So, apparently it looks like that it is anisotropic. It behaves anisotropically because we are actually uh, uh, the we are actually trying to analyze with reference to an axis which is not the orthotropic axis. Therefore, actually it is not orthotropic and angle lamina is actually actually it is not anisotropic and angle lamina is actually orthotropic with respect to the material axis even though it appears to be anisotropic. Okay. It looks like anisotropic because uh, we are trying to see in the x y plane if we apply a uh, normal stress sigma x that leads to a shear strain gamma x y. That means, if you have if you have a suppose a lamina you can see the difference suppose this is a say a 45 degree lamina. Okay. This is x this is y suppose we apply a uniaxial only sigma x then what will be its you know what will be its it will also it will also experience shear strain that means it will distort it will also distort because this will lead to gamma x y. On the other hand if you have a if you have an or suppose if you have an orthotropic lamina special orthotropic lamina and if you apply suppose this is 1 this is 2 this also coincides with x and y. Suppose you apply sigma x its, its deformed shape will be like this it will not distort it will elongate and it will contract in the transverse direction okay? because that no no gamma 1 2. Okay? Therefore, in this case 
this actually uh, looks like that this is an isotopic because there is a shear extension coupling, but it actually not if you if you actually load this along its you know uh, direction of orthotopy it will still behave as an orthotopic material that means there will not be any shear extension coupling. So, important here to see that even though q bar has 6 elements these 6 elements are function of the 4 independent elements q 1 2 q 2 2 q 1 1 and q 6 6 and theta therefore, essentially we need actually 4 independent elastic constants to specify an orthotopic lamina, but then to characterize it with reference to x y plane which which do not coincide with 1 2 we need the 6 constants which are actually functions of these 4 independent elastic constants. <coughs> now, having understood this stress strain relationship uh, using reduced transform stiffness and uh, reduced uh, I mean transform compliance matrix let us try to see the engineering constants with reference to x y plane okay, for an ortho, uh, general orthotopic angle lamina. So, again uh, like earlier cases first in case 1 we apply only sigma x and if we apply this stress strain relationship this leads to a normal strain along x this epsilon x a normal strain along y epsilon y in addition it also leads to a shear strain gamma x y okay, because this term is non-zero. Therefore, going by definition we know that E x equal to Young's modulus along x. Now, we are trying to find out what is the engineering constant with reference to x y. So, Young's modulus along x is sigma x by E x and this is 1 by S 1 1 bar. Portions ratio just like the earlier case is ratio of the epsilon y to epsilon x when only sigma x is applied and this is perfectly true here only sigma x is non-zero. Therefore, this is S 1 1 bar S 1 2 bar by S 1 1 bar. Okay. Therefore, we can write S 1 2 bar as this nu x y minus nu x y by e x. Now, because a normal stress causes a shear strain that must also be characterized this is called shear coupling coefficient it is denoted as nu x y comma x meaning if we apply a stress along x what is the shear strain along x y that is why x y comma x first x y stands for the shear strain and x is the uh, uh, the, the normal stress which is applied okay. and this is the ratio of gamma x y by epsilon x it is not sigma x it is epsilon x because to make it unitless okay. anyway sigma x is nothing uh, epsilon x is nothing but an, an indication of what is the sigma x. Okay. So, we get this s 1 6 by s 1 6 bar by s 1 1 bar. So, we can write s 1 6 bar as this in terms of uh, nu x y x divided by e x. So, in general this is the laminar level shear coupling coefficient eta i j comma i is equal to gamma i j comma divided by epsilon i. Okay. So, i j could be uh, 1, 2 and 6. Okay. Next, uh, so we have uh, established the Young's modulus along x, Poisson's ratio nu x y and in addition we have also obtained the shear coupling uh, coefficient in the x y plane. Next, we apply only sigma y that means we apply sorry this is uh, this is not the correct figure actually. Okay. This is this is actually this is x this is x this is y this is 1 and this is 2. Okay, and we apply only sigma y. We apply only sigma y. This is theta. Okay, we apply only sigma y, and sigma x and sigma tau x y is zero. Therefore, using this stress strain relationship, uh, because of application of sigma y, there is a normal stress epsilon x. There is of course a direct normal stress epsilon y, and in addition, just like because there is a shear coupling coefficient, because this term is non-zero. Therefore, there is a shear strain gamma x y. So, going by definition again Young's modulus along y is nothing but sigma y by epsilon y and this is 1 by s 2 2 bar. Poisson's ratio nu y x 
is the ratio of epsilon x by epsilon y when only sigma y is acting this is the case here. Therefore, the Poisson's ratio is s 1 to bar by s 2 to bar negative of course and we can express s 1 to bar like this. And again we have uh, the shear coupling now it is eta x y comma y that means when we apply a stress along y what is the shear strain along in the x y plane. Therefore, it is defined as the gamma x y divided by epsilon y. Epsilon y is nothing but an indication of sigma, uh, sigma y only. Okay. So, we get this. So, we can write S 2 6 bar in terms of this shear coupling coefficient and Young's modulus. Again, you can see that uh, looking at this expression for nu y x and nu x y, if you, if you compare these two, you can see that nu x y by e x equal to nu y x by u y. Similar to what we have also seen for orthotropic, you know, uh, special orthotropic, where we, we, we had nu 1 2 by u 1 is equal to nu 2 1 by e 2. So, similar to this, this is also true for generally orthotropic lamina with reference to x y. That means, nu x y and nu y x are not independent, they are actually related. And in case 3, we apply a pure shear tau x y and naturally because the shear uh, coupling coefficient is there. Therefore, it leads to a normal strain along x, normal strain along y and of course, the direct shear strain because of the shear stress. And going by the definition, the modulus shear modulus g x y is tau x y by nu x y and it is related to the S 6 6 bar like this. Okay. So, in general the stress strain relationship in terms of engineering constants for an generally orthotropic angle lamina that means you have a lamina whose this is the material direction but we are interested to get the stress strain relationship along xy where 1 2 do not coincide with xy and this is what it is the strains are related to the stress by means of ex ey gxy nu xy and in addition we have two more eta xy x eta xy y okay and this could be this again this ex ey nu xy gxy and this eta xy x eta xy y could actually be related to e 1 e 2 g 1 2 nu 1 2 and theta in this way. So, meaning that even though you can see that there are 6 engineering constants, but actually these 6 engineering constants are nothing but functions of the 4 independent engineering constants okay, and theta. Therefore, even though you, you see that there is a sh uh, shear coefficient. Okay, but the reason is that because it is still orthotropic, but the axis of orthotropy do not coincide with the uh, direction of loading and therefore, uh, when try to, when we are trying to uh, establish the relationship between the stresses and strain in the loading in the loading axis, which do not coincide with the axis of orthotropy or the material axis. Therefore, we could see that there is a shear extension coupling, but actually this is orthotropic. If we, if we apply load along the direction of orthotropy, it will still show no shear extension coupling. Okay. So, what we have learned today is that uh, we have established, we have started with macro mechanics of lamina, we have reduced uh, the uh, stress strain relationship uh, in 3D for generally or, uh, for uh, orthotropic material to a two dimensional uh, lamina and we have obtained the stress strain relationship for uh, lamina both uh, with reference to the material axis 1, 2 as well as with reference to the analysis axis x y which may not coincide with the you know the material axis okay and we have seen that again four uh, independent engineering uh, elastic constants are required to characterize a lamina and that could th those could be related to the measurable engineering constants like e1 that is the longitudinal young's modulus e2 the transverse young's modulus nu1 to the poisson's ratio and g1 to the in plane uh, shear modulus and if we while establishing the 
stress strain relationship for a generally orthotropic lamina that means where the analysis axis or loading axis do not coincide with the material axis there we have seen that uh, we need six constants in the uh, compliance and reduced uh, transform stiffness matrix but those six constants are actually functions of the four independent elastic constants for especially orthotropic lamina and theta now if you put theta is equal to 0 we will get back the same like if we put theta is equal to 0 this ex ey nu xy gu x xy will be nothing but e1 e2 nu nu 1 to g1 to for theta is equal to 0 ex will be e1 ey will be e2 nu xy will be nu 1 to g xy will be g 1 to nu xy x is equal to 0 also nu xy y equal to 0. Okay? So, basically for an orthotopic lamina we need 4 independent elastic constants and there, there are 4 engineering constants. Okay, thank you, I will continue in the next class.